Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Connor, and today we're going to be talking about Inda by Sherwood Smith. So this book is kind of hard to explain. I have tried explaining it like three times already, and I'm going to have to edit all of them out because I don't like how I'm trying to explain it. It mainly follows this boy named Inda, and he is the second son of a prince, and it kind of follows him as he's growing up. It's kind of a coming-of-age story, but also follows a bunch of other characters that kind of surround him. So you get the point of view of a bunch of different people as they're growing up in different places within this fantasy world. While reading this book, I kind of made a pros and cons list, so I'm going to go quickly over some things that I didn't really like about the book, and then I'm going to go over some things that I did like about the book, and then some neutrals that I just think that you should know if you're thinking about going into it. The first thing that I didn't like too much about the book was that it has a ridiculously high learning curve. If you are not going to be able to just, you know, pick up things as you go, it's going to be very hard for you to read this book because it has two learning curves. There's one that happens at the very beginning of the book, you're just dropped in and you just need to learn the political setup and you need to learn the history of the world and the world and everything. You just need to learn it straight away and be able to pick that up because it is not explained to you. You just have to, you know, try to stay afloat as you're reading this book. The second one comes in halfway through the book and you just have to restart and learn stuff all over again. There's a ton of learning to do in this book and so sometimes it could have get a little bit daunting and I had to pay a lot of attention to it while reading it. Um, not that you shouldn't be paying attention to the books that you're reading, but this one required extra attention. The second thing that I didn't really like was that the whole second half of the book. I didn't really like the second half of the book that much. I think it I, when I finished the book as a whole, I felt as though I had wasted a lot of time for you in the second half. And, and I'm sure in the future books that half of the book will be important, but with just finishing the first book, the second half of the book seemed totally unnecessary and I did not enjoy reading it. And I felt like I fit, like just totally wasted a, hours of my life reading it. Also, some of the characters, the secondary characters, ended up blending together and it was kind of hard to keep them separate. There was a lot of secondary characters and a lot of them had the same um, kind of like thought process and the way that they interacted with people and so a lot of them ended up just being the same in my brain and then it was hard to keep them all separate. So it kind of felt like some of the secondary characters weren't really necessary because they ended up having the same um, things they were like bringing the same things to the table as other characters that were already there so it I don't know it just wasn't the fact that there were so many um, was not you know a positive thing also a s there's a lot of repetition in this book there's a lot of scenes that are repeated with just slight differences that um, you know just build up over time and it was just kind of like you know what we understand we understand what's happening uh, you don't need to be telling me the same scene over and over again but um, I, I understand why she did it, but I just didn't really enjoy reading the same thing over and over and over. And the last uh, kind of nitpicky thing that I'm going to talk about is that I did not like how many names were in this book. Each character has at least two names. At least. Most of them have at least three. So there's a lot of names and you have to get them associated with the right person or else you are going to get super confused. There are just so many names. It's insane. Okay, I kind of harped on the bad things about it, uh, now let's talk about some of the good things that I did really like. Okay, so the first thing that I really liked was the world building. This world is really well thought out and has a lot of history and it has a lot of, um, like, pre-thought into how it was going to be and everything. And if you're gonna have a hard time with, uh, grasping the world building, it might benefit you to kind of know ahead of time of what you're getting into if you're not gonna have anyone to talk to. So at the end of the video, I'll explain to you how this world is set up so that you can watch that and then go into the read the series and not get super confused because of the learning curve. So yeah, I'll just do that at the end. So if you don't want to watch that, you don't really have to. There's a very interesting magic system that is starting to unfold in this world during this book. And I'm really excited if I do continue to see how it's expanded and built upon. At the beginning of the book, you find out that there's some magic that is happening on a daily basis. There is cleaning spells and stuff like that that go on and a lot of the men end up having these cleaning spells on their faces so they don't grow facial hair and stuff like that but a lot of the useful magic like stuff that's not every day has been lost so uh yeah it's it's very promising in future books but there's not too much magic in this book but the magic that is there i enjoyed it a lot although the political setup is very confusing like i said before and there's a high learning curve i did like how it was set up it was very unique i hadn't really read that kind of setup before and I will also talk about that you know 
at the end of the video where I'm telling you how it's how the world building is. I liked Inda as a character. I thought he was pretty smart and I thought he was um, very capable. He's a very capable character. So much so that it could be a con if I was thinking about it really clearly when I was making this list because Inda at the beginning of the book is like 10, but he totally acts like he's like 17. So sometimes the believability on how he's thinking and what he's doing is kind of off, but I really enjoyed him as a character. He didn't make any really stupid decisions. So uh, yeah, I enjoyed reading about him and I really enjoyed the secondary characters a lot. I really liked the girls in this book. I really liked how the female characters were portrayed. They were all different and they were really cool and I really enjoyed them. And they're all strong in different ways and I just really enjoyed how uh, Sherwood did um, all these female characters. A plus for that. And the last thing that I'm going to say that I really liked the book was the kind of antagonist. I thought he was really well done. I hated him so much. But I understood kind of where he was coming from. I understood his motivations because you get some of his POV in this book, but it was still just like, you're a psychopath and I hate you so much. So I think the villain was done really well. I liked him a lot. Um, well, I didn't like him, but I loved to hate him kind of thing. Like it was, he was well developed. <laughs> And just some of the neutral things that I learned while reading this book, it's a slower read. You can't just power through this book or you're just gonna, you know, lose so much detail that you should probably be able to hold on to. I would suggest reading this a little book, bit at a time. Don't rush yourself. Just, you know, slowly meander through the book and try, try to absorb as much as you can because that's, you know, that's just the best way to do it for this book. Also, there's a lot of talk about sexuality in this book. There's... This book is definitely adult in terms of pretty much every character has a sexual experience in this book. So if that's not something that you're age appropriate for or if you're not interested in that, then this book might not be for you. But yeah, there's a lot of talk about sexuality. There's a lot of um, bisexual, heterosexual, homosexual. They've got everything in this book. So yeah, that's all there if you were curious. So overall, I gave this book a 3.5 stars out of 5 stars. It was awesome to read about. I liked reading it, but at the end of the day, as I was thinking about it after I finished it, it just wasn't... There was just... Mm, I really wanted to like it, but I, I, it, there's just some stuff holding me back, so I ended up giving it a 3.5 stars. I would recommend this to people that like really complex world building and large casts of characters and coming of age stories because this book has like 800 coming of age stories. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much my review. Uh, I'm gonna do the world building after this. So if you like this video so far, please give it a big thumbs up and comment down below if you're interested in reading Inda or anything like that. If you've read it, let me know how you felt about it. If you can tell me if the fox is any better than Inda, let me know that as well because I'm debating whether or not to move on with the series and just anything. <laughs> Bye! Okay, so if you're still watching, this is to learn about the history and setup of this world uh, because it is super complicated and it'll take a while for me to explain. So in this kingdom, there are two main groups of people. There's the Yaskins and the Marlovians. And the Yaskins were the um, more intellectual people and the Marlovians were these kind of um, like war party running around type. They didn't really settle down. They didn't have a written history or anything like that. They didn't have an alphabet. So yeah, the Yaskins wrote history and stuff like that. They were the more artistic and um, renaissance-y uh, people of the two groups. The Marlovians end up attacking the Yaskins and taking over all their cities. And so they, the two groups end up merging into one, but they keep both of their languages and they're used for different things. The Yaskin language is used for uh, informal situations and for times of peace and the Marlovian language is used for war times and formal situations. The two people, there aren't many differences between them, at least not that I uh, picked up on. There are some physical differences because some people do identify as Yaskin and some people identify as Marlovian, so I didn't really pick up what the differences were, but they are two separate groups, but they are under one kingdom and they all get along, so doesn't really matter. So in this world there's a bunch of little uh, little kingdoms and each one is ruled by uh, a nobleman that have different titles. I don't think the titles really matter too much. There's like dukes and stuff like that. The main character Inda's dad is called a prince and 
I think he's called a prince because he can inherit the throne if he so chose to or if the situation were right, but I don't think his dad really wants to. His dad's pretty um, non-ambitious in that way. And I think he has some royalty in his blood, so that is why Inda's father is called a prince. Each ruler has a second in command that's called a shield arm, and they're called rondiels. So each uh, ruler of a lordship, like of a little section of land, has a secondary ruler who is in charge of protecting inside of the borders of that land, and it's the 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 ruler of that little land is supposed to go on the outside of the border and protect it from the outside, if that makes sense. So like the the prince and his father, his job is to go outside of their territory and make sure that their their land is safe, and it's the Rondales responsibility to protect the land if they're attacked. So Rondale is in charge of defense and the prince or the ruler of each small little piece of land is in charge of offensive attack and such. In addition to the Rondale being in charge of defenses for each little plot of land, the wife of the main ruler of each land is also in charge of defenses, but their defense is the inside the keep. So like inside each castle, is the wife of the main ruler's job. So there's a lot of responsibility on a bunch of different people. It's spread out through all these people and yeah, so everyone has a job. So all of these little lordship things, fiefdoms I guess, are um, controlled by an overarching king and he's in charge of everything and then his brother is the Rondial for him but he is called the Sandial uh, because he's the royal shield arm and so he has a lot more power and the royal shield arm is in charge of training all of the future rulers to the little fiefdoms. So Inda's older brother has been going to this school that's in the capital of the entire country and he's been training under the eye of the Sandial who is the royal shield arm to the overall king and he is taking his knowledge and bringing it back to his fiefdom and is training his younger brother to be his rondile and it's it's basically every future ruler of the little lands it's their job to train their rondiles for when they take power of their small group of land oh my gosh are you following? Is this making any sense at all? I don't know. At the beginning of this book, the king and the sundial decide that all the rondiles of the future rulers of each little fiefdom need to also be trained in all the same way. If there's going to be a war, everyone needs to be on the same page and have the same um, setup and the same uh, commands, I guess. And so all of the rondale are also shipped to the capital to train at this war academy. And that's basically where the beginning of the book starts. Also, who you're gonna marry is already picked out before you're even born. So, um, so the prince, Inda's father and mother already knew who Inda was going to marry before Inda was even born, before his older brother was even born. It's all planned out who's gonna be marrying who. So Inda already knows who he's supposed to marry. And it's this girl named Tador, and Tador basically grows up with Inda and um, and his brother already knows who he's supposed to marry, so there's a whole list of who's supposed to be marrying who, and it's already all set. And so, um, the girls end up leaving and going to whichever fiefdom that they're going to be married into, so they grow up and learn life there, and they end up going home and visiting, but it's not very much. So, the girls in this world are also responsible for defending, uh, inside the castle keeps, so they also have to learn battle strategies, but they learn a different type of fighting, and they also go to the capital to learn how to fight, but they are trained under someone else. I think it's the Sundial's wife. So they learn their own style of fighting, but they all end up in the capital, so everyone just has a ton of fun in the capital. And I think that's it. I think that's pretty much the political structure of this world. If that helped at all, let me know. If it didn't, I'm super sorry for making you watch that. And yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.